Drone footage shows how the Salinas River in central California was still rising on Thursday and threatening more flooding in the state. California has been hit by a series of deadly storms in recent weeks, with more forecasts to come. Communities living near the river are under an evacuation order. As authorities warn, the cresting waterway could cut off homes and businesses from essential services. Though some people have opted to stay behind, including real estate investor Johnny Reyes. He has sandbagged his home in the community of Spreckles. The roads might get flooded, but as far as our, our houses, I don't think, um, you know, our houses are built pretty high, so I don't think, you know, reach that level. But like I said, I can't, um, I don't know, Mother Nature's uh, decision. So, yeah, we have to wait. Retari Diane Souza has also opted to stay and ride out any potential flooding with her husband. We've sandbagged a garage. Um, our house is up off the ground, so we really didn't need to do much of sandbagging of that. About four or five feet off the ground. We've gone into town today since it's so nice. And my husband went and got some provisions, just things, you know, we just needed. So we're going to be here two or three days or however long we're, you know, this, we may be stranded. A historic stretch of heavy rains and fierce winds since the end of December has caused widespread flooding, punishing residents from the Bay Area to Los Angeles. Towns have been submerged, wind gusts have downed power lines, and dozens of roadways have been made impassable by mudslides. As many as 19 people have been killed in the storms, including a woman who rescuers found drowned in her submerged car. And it's not over yet. The National Weather Service says at least two more storm systems are set to pound the state starting Friday and over the weekend, including another so-called atmospheric river characterized by dense moisture funneled into California from the tropical Pacific. The state has already been hit with seven such weather systems over the past two weeks. Thousands turned out in Peru on Thursday for an anti-government protest demanding the president step down. The peaceful mass rally came after weeks of more violent civil unrest sparked by the ousting of President Dina Boluarte's predecessor, Pedro Castillo. Bloody clashes between protesters and police have resulted in the deaths of at least 42 people. On Thursday, demonstrators in the capital Lima held a banner calling Boluarte a murderer and placed cardboard coffins in front of police officers. Olga Espejo was in the rally. Miss Dina Blart, be aware you're being used. Why are you turning your back on the people? There are so many deaths. For God's sake, stop this massacre. It's not fair. I know people who are taking to the streets to protest and they're outraged like me. We're being accused of being terrorists, but we aren't terrorists. Thursday in the tourist hub of Cusco was less relaxed as police fired tear gas to curb street protests. Its international airport, where tourists land to reach the Inca citadel of Machu Picchu, was forced to close the second time in as many months. Victims injured in recent clashes were flown to a hospital near Lima for treatment. Peru has been gripped in protests for weeks. Demands include Boluarte stepping down, earlier elections, a new constitution and the release of Castillo, who was arrested for rebellion after trying to illegally shut down Congress. The country's labor minister resigned on Thursday. He said the country needs an apology for deaths from its political crisis and urged the government to admit its mistakes. Peru's prime minister said on Thursday it's unlikely Boluarte would resign, not because she doesn't want to, but because she has constitutional requirements to consolidate the succession. Boluarte and members of her cabinet are being investigated by Peru's attorney general for the handling of the unrest. The same day, Peru's Congress, which fiercely opposed former leader Castillo, passed a vote of confidence in Boluarte's government. Tesla has slashed prices in the US and Europe in a bid to drive sales. The US price cuts were announced late Thursday and covered all car models. Reuters calculations showed a discount of up to 20%. That could exceed 30% when you add in new federal tax credits, which took effect this month. In Germany, Tesla cut prices on its Model 3 sedan and Model Y crossover. Those are its best-selling vehicles worldwide. The discounts ranged up to almost 17%. Prices were also cut in Austria, Switzerland and France. Such moves follow reductions announced earlier in China and other Asian markets. 
The discounts come after Tesla missed Wall Street estimates for deliveries. They also mark a sharp reversal from its former strategy when demand was stronger and prices were trending higher. Last month, company boss Elon Musk said that global interest rate rises had changed the outlook for the industry and could require price cuts. Analysts said the new moves should work to stimulate demand. They could also spark a price war with European and Chinese rivals. Volkswagen only recently raised the price of its entry-level ID3 model, putting it roughly on par with Tesla's Model 3. Musician Lisa Marie Presley has died at the age of 54, the only daughter of rock and roll legend Elvis Presley. Reports said she was hospitalized on Thursday after suffering a cardiac arrest in her Los Angeles home. Presley was last seen on the red carpet at the Golden Globe Awards just days ago, praising actor Austin Butler's portrayal of her father in the biopic Elvis. He just did such a beautiful job and his heart was so in it and he, it meant so much to him and it was such an honor for me and I respected so much what he did. So it was a mutual love and respect that truly, like, was, really came at a really nice time. Her mother, Priscilla Presley, in a statement urged for privacy as the family tried to deal with this profound loss. Lisa Presley was born in 1968 and was the owner of her father's Graceland estate in Memphis, a popular tourist attraction. She was nine years old when Elvis died at Graceland in 1977. A rock and pop singer-songwriter herself, Lisa's albums To Whom It May Concern and Now What both hit top 10 of the Billboard 200 in 2003 and 2005. She was married four times to pop star Michael Jackson, musician Danny Keough, actor Nicolas Cage, and musician producer Michael Lockwood, and is survived by three children. Her only son, Benjamin Keough, died in 2020, aged 27. Well